everybody. It's me, Will Hart. You know what this is. You've been watching it. I don't need to repeat what it is, uh, but it's our podcast. And today I am super pumped. I reached out. I didn't even have your info. So I, I did something <laughs> I've never done before. I sent a message through Instagram. I was like, please, will you come on? Please, please, please. And lo and behold, the amazing Lindy Conant. Conant? Conant? Co- Co- it's Covant, and then Conant? I got married. Now it's Cofer, so it's like so confusing for people. So you can Conant Cofer, just go there. Lindy C reached out. <laughs> Lindy Coco. There Lindy we go. Coco reached out, and that's why I, I just love the fact that you responded. But uh, Lindy said yes, and and I got her on. Come on, we got the exclusive <laughs> right now. She literally said, "I'm not speaking to anyone else, just you at the green room." Is that true? That's true, right? <laughs> she she can confirm that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and and I'm looking forward to hearing her story. I love these sorts of opportunities because we we've met briefly, we've we've chatted, we've been running around the globe. I've heard your name for years, for years, but our wow. paths never really crossed until recently. So I'm actually looking forward to learn a little bit more about your life, hearing your story, and uh, and we're going to go from there. How does that sound? I love it. Awesome. And for those of you who don't know who who Lindy is, uh, amazing worship leader. Very closely connected with YWAM and, yeah, yeah. and, and I don't know, lead singer, leader of Circuit Riders worship team, yes, worship band. Yeah, so Circuit Riders is a part of YWAM and it's basically the university outreach arm of YWAM. So I'm a part of Circuit Riders in Huntington Beach. Yeah. Awesome. And you travel the globe singing, going nuts in the glory. I watched you in Brazil and I, I saw you at the send in Orlando. I was like, oh my God, because Heidi's been talking to me about you for years because we do events and she's like, Will, I want to get Lindy. And I was like, I don't know who that really is. They're like, she's like circuit riders. I was like, I don't really know. Like, I know that they're things, but I don't know anything about them. Yeah. And finally, after I saw you, I ran up to her and I was like, oh my goodness, why don't I listen to you more often? And she was like, you don't. And we had a moment. We had some inner healing together, and uh, I submitted Love entirely. <laughs> uh, blown away by your gift mix. Blown away, not just at your your ability to bring the presence in, sing from your heart, but uh, as I've been watching from the sidelines, your character, your passion, your humility, and all of it, uh, well, just blown away. So well. for those of us uh, who, who want to learn more about you, uh, where, do we get, where do we get started? Where did you begin this journey with the Lord? Yeah, that's a great question. So I was raised in the Bible Belt, right in the heart of Oklahoma, right smack dab in the middle. And I was around Christians my whole life, surrounded by Christians, grew up in the church to where I just thought everyone's a Christian and you believe in Jesus to not go to hell. That was mm-hmm. kind of my paradigm of Christianity. And then when I was in high school, there was this girl who was on fire for God. And I would say that was really the first kind of inner awakening where I went, there's something I don't know. And the Lord really used this girl to make me curious. I wouldn't say hunger for God. I would say curious. So I started going on a bunch of missions trips with some of my friends purely because traveling sounded fun. Yeah. And kind of everyone did that, you know, in like high school, it's like you do the church missions trip. And so I did that. And on one of these missions trips, I had a powerful encounter with God. And I went, I, I resolved that God is real. God is powerful, and I do not know him. And so I took my experience I had on this missions trip and really went back to my parents and said, I think I'm meeting God on this missions trip to Mexico. Can I take a year off after high school and take a gap year and pursue missions? And without hesitating, they were like, absolutely. So believe it or not, I Googled mission school, and that's how I found YWAM. Awesome. And That was in 2006. So 2007, I went and did a DTS at YWAM Kona, which Mm -hmm. is a discipleship training school. And my whole world flipped upside down. I mean, I had never, didn't really know about Holy Spirit, spiritual warfare. And uh, the way a DTS is structured in YWAM is it's 12 weeks of lecture phase and then 12 week outreach. And the 12 week lecture phase is a, a different topic and different speaker every week. So you're just like drinking from a fire hose for 12 weeks in a row. And I just, I ended that going, I'm ruined for the ordinary. And at that point, I didn't really lead worship. I kind of sang, but not like confidently and not as if it was something I would want to do with my life. 
And I just remember, though, going, I had no idea he was this good. I had no idea the power of the cross. I had no idea what led Jesus to the cross. I had no idea why the Father would even send his only son to rescue us. And when I came into a revelation of Jesus, the gospel, the Holy Spirit, and then the hour we're living in, I just got so captivated with the thought of, wait, 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 time out. We have the Holy Spirit. Like we are the generations living in between the first and second coming filled with his spirit. Why is no one talking about this? How have I been around the church my whole life and (laughs) no one told me the gospel this way? And I just, it's so funny because people would always say, you have such an evangelistic heart. And I was like, I I love that. I received that. But it's because when I got saved, I, I felt this almost righteous indignation of why didn't anyone ever tell me? Wow. I was around so many Christians and no one ever told me. And I didn't feel angry. I felt grateful of what a privilege to be able to live life on earth, like being so immersed in Jesus that we can like reflect him in our in our obedience, in our, uh, who we are, in our personalities, that it could reflect a living, breathing God. So that kind of started my whole journey of, I like wanting to stay in YWAM. So yeah. fast forward, Andy Berg came to YWAM Kona in 2008 to pioneer a house of prayer. I had never heard of house of prayer. I was like, what's that? People live in a house and pray. I don't understand. <laughs> and him and a team of like six people showed up to Kona burning for yeah. the presence of God just valuing worship and prayer. And it was like, I just, everything in me was like, this is why I was made. And basically if you could sing, you were leading in the prayer room there because no one goes to YWAM to lead worship, you know? So if you could hold a note, you were leading in the prayer room. And so I started leading in the prayer room and it was just this perfect timing thing of Andy showing up and the prayer room and then fire and fragrance births, circuit riders births out of fire and fragrance. That's kind of the university outreach. And then in the midst of this, the Lord was always speaking about the send like eight. I would be probably eight years ago. Now was when the first prophetic word came of there will be stadium gatherings called the send. So it's been amazing to be like, a 19 year old i've grown up in this movement as yeah. a, you know with ywam and and firing fragrance and watching andy and and the brent and i feel really like wow it, it's such a privilege to be a daughter in this but i feel like now it's a shifting season of like wow we're raising up worshipers we're raising up musicianaries like it's time to send people out so <laughs> that's like a very short version of who i am how i got to ywam what am i doing in southern california everyone's always like who are you where do you live do you live in reading what do you do huh like i'm like i love that i have accidentally remained a mystery <laughs> yeah I, I well number one you're not a mystery you're <laughs> You're out there just giving it your all. And just real quick, shout out to Andy Bird. That dude's a legend. He makes yes. me feel like I'm not saved uh, exactly. in the best yeah. way possible. I, yes. What a zealous man for God. Yeah. And, and yeah, you know who Andy reminds me of? He reminds me of Bill in a lot of ways. Really? Like man of principle, man of conviction, like yes. man of peace, man of radical love. We love you, Andy. I'm not going to talk about you. I'm, I'm going to get you on another time, Andy. But, yeah, uh, oh, my and I, we... Andy's the best. We're just like, just such one of the most humble leaders. Yeah. yeah. Incredible. You go on and on, but yeah. Well, uh, so, so I met you, uh, gosh, when was the first time I, I feel it? Was it the send in Orlando? Was that the first time we connected? You there? Did I lose you? I think I lost you. Hello. 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 <gasps> Are you back? Can you hear me? Can you see me? Can you hear me? I can totally I can see you. you. I can see you and okay. hear you. Yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> awesome. Hey, so, uh, no, so the question I was asking was, uh, when, when did we actually meet? Was it was it in Orlando? I, I'm trying to put a timeline on it. I want to say maybe it was briefly in Orlando, but our true introduction would have been the San Brazil. The San Brazil. So yeah. uh, that was, at well, that, that was... Brazil was a culmination of just years of promises, sowing into a nation, uh, running with wow. friends, and watching God weave this tapestry uh, that 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 was larger than anything I ever envisioned twenty years ago when I first set foot in Brazil. How wow. was that experience for you? I know, can, for me, I've been going to Brazil for twenty years. Uh, I remember you. 
I was like, whoa. To take the stage, you know, with with one of my with one of my good friends, Teo, before he even I knew him before he even started Dunamis and to see, you know, now how big it's it's gotten to take the stage uh, with him and cry out for an outpouring of the spirit impartation was one of the most impacting days of my life. Not because of the numbers and that was pretty cool, too. I'm not going to lie. Uh, yeah. But but it was like this culmination of of all these promises in my life. Uh, how, how was the send for you? What did you, you I know Orlando was one, but Brazil was like. It was it was off the chain. Uh, yeah. yeah, talk talk to me about it. Yeah, I, well, first of all, I remember when you were sharing your story about Brazil. I had had no idea your history, and it was powerful to hear. Not you, and I feel like so many people came to the Send Brazil as a culmination of wild prophetic storylines with the Lord, which really spoke into the the power of the event. I would say, I you know, Dunamis played a huge role in my life. But the first time I went out there, they actually invited me to be on their first live project. And at that point, I had not recorded much. And I just remember Teo going, do you believe you are who you say you are? Do you believe you are who God says you are? And I was like, I, I actually don't think so. And that trip changed my life. Because I came back to America, and that's when we recorded Every Nation. Our first album was because Teo really challenged me in a really great way of, hey, listen, we're bringing you out here to do this, uh, but do you believe, like, when you go home, you can also do this? Wow. And it rocked me. Yeah. And so that was kind of the beginning of my storyline with Brazil and just wanting to serve this nation and going, okay, Teo was a catalyst to me. But I, the whole nation of Brazil is a catalyst for revival. Yeah. And I just feel like I've experienced that in so many different ways. Even at the Send Orlando, during yes. their set, their portion, I yeah. was like, uh-oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Okay. Something. <laughs> I, I just remember being side stage in an encounter <laughs> and going, I don't know what's going to come of the Send Orlando, but something's going to happen in Brazil. Yeah. And then to watch the faith of Teo and Andy and Titus and so many others go, let's do this. Oh, the first stadium filled. They thought it was a glitch because how does that happen? Right. It sold out faster than U2 and Coldplay. Mm -hmm. What is this? Okay, let's go to three stadiums or let's go to two. Then, okay, this is filling up. Let's go to three. So for me, it felt, first of all, I always still have this sense of like, I do not know how I got here, Lord, but wow, I cannot <laughs> believe that people <laughs> are actually, it's like, I remember being like 19 years old and hearing a Misty Edwards song and just going like, oh my gosh, <laughs> this is why I was made. I feel like this whole thing of intimacy under advocacy yeah. is that next sound almost of people going, this is what I was made for, like radical intimacy with the Lord unto advocacy for his name. Yeah. And obviously you guys in Iris, you're the pioneers of this. Heidi is, she's been, she's been shouting this her whole life, yeah. you know, yeah. just abiding unto action. And I think Brazil felt surreal. It felt like this is a new era. We yeah. are in a new era. And I know that's been like the tagline of the sand, like a new era of missions. But I went, no, the media team is prophetic. They heard that for a reason yeah. because we are in a new era of missions. And I think standing in Brazil so I had the privilege of I don't, going to all three stadiums, which was so unique because you got to see like, oh, my goodness, this is not just an event. This mm -hmm. is not just another deal. Lives are being impacted with the gospel unto going. And so it I, I left very unraveled from Come San Brazil on. in a good way, but just really found myself inquiring of the Lord of like, I need to understand the times and seasons we're in to serve well. I don't want to just sing another song. I don't yeah. want to just leave another goosebump song or do another thing where people get hyped. I'm like, I, as someone who is singing at these things, whether, however, the Lord keeps that up. I'm like, I want to be so immersed in the times and seasons because I feel like this is a window we're going to remember for a long time. So I feel like this in Brazil was really like, it, yeah, like I said, it, I feel like it unraveled me in a really unique way. Like, Wow, I'm I'm woke. <laughs> I love it. Just just so people know what we're talking about. Uh, you mentioned Teo. Yeah. Uh, Teo yeah. um, is the leader of Duna, Dunamis Ministries in Brazil. Yes. He's he's about my yeah. age. Uh, 
yeah, amazing man. He started uh, Dunamis 10 years ago, 10, 11 years ago, and and just took it from a dream uh, of God wanting to do something in this in this group of of youth at the time that really hadn't been a, yeah. uh, been been a part of the move of the spirit and it's and it snowballed into a massive movement across Brazil and and then what I love about like Teo we're talking Andy Bird Teo you know YWAM uh, Dunamis uh, these guys came together these 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 young young men relatively young men up and upcoming leaders got together and said we're stronger together. And mm-hmm. there is more than just us building our own thing. We actually have to see these these gatherings become not just about a gathering, but about a call. And 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 yep. and in the send, it, it was very clear that that the send was that people are going to get sent out by this amazing gathering. And I've been to a lot of the the other large gatherings. I don't want to name names, but I've been to a lot of them, and I love them all. But there, when I stepped into Orlando. Uh, and, and it's probably just because I'm bent on missions. When I stepped yeah. into Orlando, I was like, okay, this is a moment where people are going to are gonna make a choice. At the other, a lot of the other large gatherings, like, it's like, I want to see, I want to watch, I want to participate in the day, for, but but I'm not making a choice. You know, I might go deeper with right. God, but 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 at the send, the, the, clear, the clarion call, the, the clarity of the call was there. And to see people yeah. respond, super beautiful. What I saw at the send in Brazil... For me, and partially just partially just because I've been going there for so long, uh, early on, Brazil's been in a revival. It's been in a move for a long time, ever yeah. since I can remember. But but it's it's been very uh, divided, right? To um, to organizations or to denominations or to leaders, and to see those walls come down and just and just the body come together. Uh, screaming out to be used by him, I, I that yeah. that was very beautiful for me. I've I've been in so many churches that have split, or you know, uh, in Brazil, or or leadership says no, that's not what we agree with. Oh. So they so they shut down everybody from going, and to see that happen, and and Bolsonaro, the president, ended up coming into the stadium in Brasilia, you know, and, yeah. and declared his faith to a nation. And I, I just think those moments are historic, and it's crazy. Like, I, and I know yeah. you're much, much, much younger than me, but but I know you've been doing this for a long time, right? Like, you've been you've been at the plow for a long time. But to see <laughs> to see like starting off from the cry at YWAM or the cry in my, yeah. in my life, it was in Paraguay or or in yeah. Mozambique. Like, here I am, God use me, and then you're on the platform, you know, crying out over a nation, speaking to thousands mm-hmm. upon thousands upon thousands of people like I pinch myself and I go oh my god it's actually happening it's yeah. n- it's not just a cry or a, or a prayer in the secret place anymore god's taken that and 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 put it to the nation so that that yeah. it was so precious and just as a friend of those guys Andy Teo um just to to see my my brothers just r- reach this amazing place uh exactly. in their yeah. own life uh and and to see them step out take Take faith and, and see it happen. I, I love it. But anyway, we're so not here to hear my opinion. I want to hear your opinion. How no, are you doing? <laughs> how are you doing in 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 uh, L.A.? How how are things going? I know L.A. was one of the places that was hit. Are you guys doing okay? How's your family? Yeah, our family's great. It's definitely been you know my my mom back in Oklahoma. I'm like, what did you do for Mother's Day? She's like, we went out to dinner. I'm like, what's that like? <laughs> you know, because Southern California is not going to be that way for quite some time. You know. So it's been really good. I feel like ob- there's the obvious things of establishing a greater realm of his presence in our home. You mm-hmm. know, I don't even know the right language to use. I think it yeah. is awareness, having a greater awareness of his presence in our home. Of course, that's number one. But I also feel like it's it's kind of had this reverse effect on us where I feel like we are groaning for injustice issues like we never have. It was kind of a surprise because I feel like we have time to wait on the Lord and go, What's on your heart? Just as your friend, what are you feeling today, Jesus? How can we pray? How can we partner with you in intercession? And I've been really confronted with my lack of time where I come before the Lord in intercession Hmm. and just go, what's on your heart? Like, how can I partner with you in prayer today? And I've been pretty wrecked with just the whole thing of, you know, I I found out yesterday I've been, we're foster parents. And so we've been keeping up with statistics so we can stay on top of really all we can do right now is pray. But what's happening with domestic abuse and domestic violence and 
our kids just like going into the system like crazy right now because of what's going on? And the answer is yes. And abuse has gone up. Numbers you can't even fathom. You cannot even fathom. When I heard yesterday, I was like, there was a nurse who said she's never seen anything like this. Kids that are being brought into the hospital because they're at home and people yeah. are losing jobs and school yeah. was kind of their relief. So I don't mean to share like doom and gloom, but no, we've been go for it. really grip, really gripped by this being home. And we've really gone like, all right, you know, we're foster parents and part of being foster parents is taking like adopting the bio parents. So our foster son, we are going to adopt him, but we're still walking with his mom, but we're just going, we feel the Lord challenging us. Like, will you get loud about this? If the church doesn't rise up and take these kids in, mm. I just get emotional. I, I'll give you a long list of who will take them in, and it's not who you want to take them in. So I just feel like now is the time. It, I know that's such a buzzword in charismatic Christianity. Now is the time. Right. But now is the time for Christians to uh, go, Lord, I want to know what selfless, costly love looks like. Mm. Because without it, we can't see change in culture. It will cost you something to see change in culture. It will cost you something. You know, people always go, Lindy, I don't know how you did it. All the traveling <laughs> and you're a foster mom. And I'm like, well, and my life isn't the same. Like, it costs me something. Right. Do that. And, but the price is not even comparable when you think about what would have happened if we wouldn't have gone and picked him up. Right. Do you know what I mean? So totally. I do this this quarantine time has kind of let it sink in for my husband and I a little bit more of what is really happening in our backyard in Southern California, what yeah. really is happening down the street from us. And I feel like it took us being home and sorry about that. Being still. Oh no, you're fine. Being home and being still to like wake up. Yeah. You know, we're so focused on the nations and going out, which is like so who we are we're not ashamed of that but i feel like the lord's used this quarantine of like i know you saw your backyard but i'm gonna open your eyes a little bit wider especially wow. being in southern california so we're we're pretty wrecked right now come on i've just god what are you asking us to do uh two seconds i just want to dig into this for a minute yeah. so i know that um first of all i know that that call to foster and adopt is 100% in individual. It's something that the Lord's put on your heart, but there's also a cry that's been coming out of YWAM. Andy Bird has been the voice that yep. I hear the loudest with this. Um, I've yeah. worked with some other churches. I worked with an amazing church in Texas where they actually took a stand, a, a very large church in uh, Abilene, Texas. And I, I remember watching the pastor take a stand. He goes, there's there's 90 kids in our district or whatever that are, that are fostered, um, you know, as that will not be next year, because as a church, we will not let children fall fall into the system and 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 be abused and you know just be without mothers and fathers. So so it's time to That's step right. up. And he adopted. He was like, and I'm adopting, by the way. And they just took it on as a culture, and it's not without its difficulties uh, at, at all. But but I love that James says true religion is tending to the orphan and the widow, looking after mm -hmm. them in, the, in their distress. It, re religion that is faultless and pure. So there is something in this, Malachi, uh, I will turn the hearts of fathers, sons, sons to fathers, or else I will yep. strike the, the land with a, with a curse. We are, yep. it, the church loves to scream family, but only if it's their biological family. I have not personally adopted or fostered yet. I, I have not done it. I, I do. Um, we, my sister did adopt, and I look at her as my daughter, uh, Natalia from Mozambique. Uh, but I personally, my, my yes. wife and I personally haven't. But it is a struggle. It is a very, very big struggle, and there's a lot of there's a lot of fear. So, give for for those who are listening, uh, yeah. give like how did you overcome that fear? How did you overcome that like uh, I want my own kids, or and maybe after I get my own kids, I'll, I'll do it because then it, then it'll be fine. You know, like how did you overcome this? Like, what's your process? Yeah. My answer, I feel like to some people will like cause an eye roll, but I mean it with all my heart is. Like, be sold out for Jesus, because I'm going to tell you that the Lord disrupted my husband and I. <laughs> Two years married, we were ready to start a family, and we heard, adopt first. Wow. And we were like, excuse me? No, no, that's not how it works, Lord. Like, you have your own kids, and then maybe they grow up a little bit, and then you adopt, and adopt first. And we were like, okay. And had we not cultivated a lifestyle of 
friendship with God, intimacy with God, hearing the Lord's voice, but from that all having a fear of the Lord, that his leadership is best, not because I'm afraid of him, but because I know his way is life. He's mm. the way, the truth, and the life. And so we really held this before the Lord. We actually went to an adoption agency. We left. My husband said, I have no peace. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, why? And then I kid you not, it was like the following two weeks. Of course, Andy, we love Andy. <laughs> He's been such a pioneer for foster care. His wife, Holly, is a freaking boss. Okay. <laughs> My goodness. Andy's amazing. <laughs> Holly is like. You're accurate. <laughs> don't get me started. Okay. She single handedly, I feel like, has pioneered this whole thing with foster care because she took in one kid and activated all these families. So we were aware of foster care. We were more aware of it in Kona than we Kona, Hawaii, than we were Southern California. But what happened was we left this adoption agency and my husband went, This isn't right. And I we just went, Lord, are we supposed to foster? And then if we get to adopt out of foster care, great. But actually the highest in foster care is reunification with the mm. biological family. Right. And we knew that would be costly. But Lord, is this what you're saying? And we just held it before the Lord. And there was, yes, confirmation, but not like an angel didn't come out of the sky. It got yeah. to the point where it was like, now, Lord, we have discovered too much that we can't sit back and be silent. Yes. So yeah. there is a place of biblical righteous indignation <laughs> that's of God, where Paul says, be angry, but don't sin. And he says, be angry. He doesn't say, if you get angry. And I think he was speaking to injustice issues there because it says, be angry, but don't sin on your anger. And I think what happened to my husband and I was we went, well, now we've walked down this path where now we've discovered the need. And now we feel driven and motivated by the love of Christ to respond. So, because when what happened was through through not just going through an adoption agency, it forced us to discover how the opioid pan pandemic has increased fivefold, and the amount of drug babies in hospitals has increased fivefold, and no one's talking about it. And all these babies cannot legally go home with anyone and they go right into the foster care system because the level of drugs they are born addicted to and no one's there's murmurs but we're not talking about it as a church right. saying let's go get these babies and you know what is crazy um our foster son when he was taken to his first appointment to see his effects of drugs doctor came in not a christian trembling who are you and what have you done? Mm -hmm. This baby mm -hmm. has no effect. Stop. Okay. No, time out. Like, t just share about that. Don't just, don't, don't skip over that one. Like, so yeah, you, yeah. you got him totally drug addicted. What, what happened? So we just felt, honestly, I was so, Heidi is a mom to me, but when I traveled <laughs> with her, especially being in Pemba with her, I would watch her with babies mm -hmm. and so I would go this, I'm called to this. I'm called to this. We would just hold him. We would speak in tongues. We would just. We would ask the Lord, like we would just pray crazy over him, like until we would feel things lift. And then, you know, we did an event with Michael Koulianos and we were like, Michael, we need you to lay hands on him. Like, and we just moved in faith. Like, mm. can everyone just lay hands on him? We took him in. It was just like, this is what we were made for. We were made to pick this baby up, addicted to drugs, take him to this first doctor's appointment. He's absolutely healed. When we, when he gets adopted and we can post pictures and videos, you would have not even a clue Come on. that he was ever even affected by any sort of drug. You know what I mean? He Come is on. whole. He's restored. This kid definitely knows he's loved. He's got some serious <laughs> swagger. It's uh, dangerous a little bit. We're like, okay, man, okay, maybe we've pumped a little bit too much confidence in you, but hey, <laughs> whatever. Um, but it's it's wrecked us. It's totally wrecked us. And we've yeah. also gone, like you said, it's not a pressure thing. We don't want to pressure, but there is a level of responsibility. I feel the the Lord is asking the church to take. And I love how like Kona is such a great model. Not every family is called to foster, right. but the ones that are are so supported. Mm -hmm. They are so helped. And like you know, my friend Shannon, she said it's so great. She goes, my best friend Holly is called to foster and adopt. I have had six of my own children, but you know what I can do? I can take Holly's kids and help her. I right, can throw right. down to her. So there isn't like a condemnation thing in it, but it really is a, That's so we have important. to rise up together. That's so important that you say that because 
I, I, I've had so many conversations with people that want to adopt and they struggle through it. And, and I come harsh. I'm like, okay, if, if there was a baby here and they needed a mom and dad, like, what do you think Jesus' answer would be? Like, I'm very black and white. Right, I'm like, yeah, right. you just do it. And life's hard and you just do it. Um, you know, but, but that's so beautiful, right? Like the reality is we do what we're called to do, but don't, but don't just take that and, and not engage. Like don't run away. I, I love right. the fact of those people that are just like, Hey, I can't do this now. I know that I have, I have clarity in that, but I'm going to do whatever I can to help with the situation. Super beautiful. Right. And, I, and you know what? Kona just breeds that community that, that right. there is no like, Oh, you're, you're not a part of this. It's like, no, we're all a part of this together. I love that. Every time I visit Kona, um, you see that community in so many different ways, whether it's in health or, or children or families or like a school. I, I just, I love that place. I've fallen in love with that place. Yeah. And the, and the water's pretty nice too over there. So, okay. Like so how many kids, Disneyland. what's that? It's spiritual Disneyland, Kona. <laughs> I've never heard that, but I would agree. I would totally agree. Yeah. Okay. So how many kids do you have? How many kids do you adopted or fostered or how many do you have? I, I don't know. So right now we have two um, mm -hmm. because, we got, uh, I can't say his name legally, so I'm glad I caught that. Uh, we got, we call him Bubba on social media. Uh, we got Bubba, uh, December, 2018, 2009, 2018. Yeah. And then a month later we found out we were pregnant. So, which was awesome. Uh, we were so excited. We were just totally shocked. So we have two babies. One is seven months, one 17 months. And the way the state of California works is, Zion has to be a year old before we can take any more right. foster babies in. Heidi kind of joked with me that it was probably the Lord because <laughs> we probably would have taken in way more kids than we could that's handle. The, that's the pot calling the kettle black right there. Heidi's got like, she's like, you come with me, you come with me, you come with me, you come like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're, uh, but what's amazing is we've had two families around us get approved for foster care. One just got a foster baby. So it's amazing to see young couples around us, like meeting Bubba and going, okay, I can do this. Like this is a, they see a real kid who was actually delivered, healed yeah. and they go, okay. So it's, it's been incredible to see families around us doing it and getting on board. So it's super it. fun. And, and then, you know, in the middle of it, there's Andy, uh, Todd White. Uh, has, yep. has, uh, you have, uh, man, there was another one just right off the top of my head, uh, Todd White, uh, um, Brian and Jen Johnson. Um, I think I, I could be wrong. I don't know if Todd has adopted two or one. I, I forgive me. I, I know one two. for sure, but yeah, yeah. He, he, maybe maybe when I saw him, he was talking about getting getting number two. But I just love yeah. that, and and I love how the the leaders are are doing it by example. I'm feeling super convicted right now. Yeah, <laughs> I need to. yeah. We'll um, we'll talk about this after the podcast. <laughs> please, <laughs> please, just look away. Don't look at me. Uh, <laughs> we, 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 yeah. Anyway, well, let's change the subject, shall we? No, <laughs> no. I just I stink and love it. Can I tell you just because I like I said I I I. I am the father uh, to Natalia, my sister's my sister's daughter, and so I get a yeah. taste of it. I get a taste of it. Uh, just super cool story. Um, uh, two close friends of ours. They they are actually they work at Global. Global. They're some of the leaders. Uh, okay. Got married. Couldn't get pregnant. Couldn't get pregnant. Started a fostering. Uh, fast forward five, I think five ten years. I don't even know. I'm butchering the timeline. They've taken in five kids. I've been Whoa. there. I've been there for two of the adoption ceremonies, and it, I think it's one of the only times I've full on bawled in front of our staff. Uh, that we all the staff uh, goes, we go to the to the court, and we and we watch wow. we watch the name change and everything. And then they were getting ready to do number six, right? So they're they're just they're just doing whatever they can, and uh, they're getting ready to sign off the paperwork. Find out, I think after seventeen years of trying, pregnant. So they have their they have their sixth sixth baby Whoa. now. And listen, I'm not gonna make a principal out of it. They probably wouldn't like me using them as an example, but I I, f I find so much beauty in being obedient, right? It's struggling through it, finding God in the middle of it, mm -hmm. finding these kids that that really that 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 needed them. And at the same time, we gotta go and like, I got this. Like, don't worry. I'm gonna give you yeah. I'm gonna give you more than you expected, more, better yeah. than you expected, <laughs> and your heart's desire. And wow. there's, there's a special place in the Lord's heart for those who take care of his children. It's it just, it's just true. 
So, man, I love that. I didn't expect that we were going to talk about this. I thought we were going to talk about worship and all the things, but you're freaking fascinating, and I realize why so many people love you. You're a firecracker. I, I just stink and love it. How? Okay, so let me just check real quick. Uh, I, I don't want to take, oh, my gosh. Girl, we've just, like, gone into a time warp. I, I love it. I thought we'd been doing this for, like, 10 minutes, but... It's not two two seconds. I have a couple more things. I just want I just yeah. want to ask you if you got time. Yeah. Um, how long have you been married? Uh, almost four years. How'd you guys meet? Uh, in YWAM Kona. Gosh, you guys. Yeah. YWAM. I'm telling you. Listen, I'm a fan of Iris, but man, YWAM's killing it. They're just crushing it. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Well, when did you, how old were you when you wrote your first album, put your first, uh, your first worship uh, yeah, album 25. out? So it would have been, well, 2016. So like, no, 26, uh, man, the years blur together. Once you they turn 30, do. it's like, what's what? So 2016 was when we released our first album. Okay. So four years ago. So I would have been 26. Okay. What's your favorite song that, that you've written? Your favorite song. My favorite song. I, I'm not saying this because it's like a song a lot of people like, but Every Nation is special because it was it was written out of a deep encounter with the Lord. And okay. it every time I sing it, I feel like I go right back to that place of oh my goodness. Come on. Whoa. I love it. I'm like, oh so it's it's personal, but it, it's funny how such a personal song to me became so corporate. I'm like, all right, cool. But, it's such yeah. a great song. Okay, hey. I'm gonna do a couple more rapid fire at you because I just want yeah, to get I it. I want to squeeze as much out. Uh okay, who is your favorite worship leader right now that 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 you're listening to right now? Like number one, wake up in the morning, like I just want to get in the presence, boom. Yeah. Okay. I got two. Yeah. Ready? Lisa Smith. Love her upper room. She's one of my best friends. Yes. But Lucy Grimble, if you've not heard this, do you know who she is? I have no idea. Forgive me. She's from the, the UK. I met her at David's Tent. She does the David's Tent event every uh-huh. year. Her songs are wrecking me right now. Lucy like, I wish Grimble. I could... Yes. Okay. L-U-C-Y and then Grimble. G-R-I-M-B-L-E. I literally am like, I if I could get a megaphone... And just like blast to every playlist and every, all the stuff. Like, I'm like, go listen to her stuff. It's carries the presence, but I feel like she's got a little bit of that Keith Green edge where she says some things. I'm like, that needs to be said. Thank you. Um, oh, you know, I can't it wait. Was like, yeah, she's awesome. Okay. Who's your favorite preacher that's not like someone you know? And if they hear you say it, they're going to be like, well, I thought I was your favorite preacher. Like, who's your. Maybe outside of YWAM, who's, who, who do you yeah. listen to when you need encouragement? Okay, you know what's funny? I listen, I love finding podcasts by Brooke Ligertwood, uh, formerly Brooke Frazier from Hillsong. Okay, yes, yes. Yes, yeah, and then T.D. Jakes. Oh, gosh, if you don't like yourself some T.D., yeah. that dude's amazing. Uh, one of my favorite T.D. Jakes things, you should check it out, is the, uh, the Elephant Room uh, with, with oh, T.D. Cool. Jakes. Super cool. It's like these mega pastors get together and they like challenge each other, sometimes confront each other, but find common ground. They have different denominations. So you have like Stephen Furtick, TD Jakes, and like it's. I ne- need to see this. It came out like seven years ago. It, it only was like two or three seasons and it, and it wasn't even, I think it was probably for online only. And then it disappeared. Yeah. But I discovered it, I don't know, a year ago and I've watched them all. But TD on there is spec. Spectacular. So you should you should check that out. Okay, what do you what do you like to do for fun? Okay, so you're off the road. You you and your husband are hanging out. What do you guys yeah. What do you guys do for fun? Um. Well, we live by the beach, so you know we got our bikes back here. I don't know if you can see them, but um, we love a good like get on the bike, bike ride, go to the beach. It's so honestly, I've never. I was born and raised in a landlocked state, mm-hmm. so the fact that I went to Hawaii and Southern California, I still feel like. This is amazing. So, okay. Last question, and I have not asked this of anyone yet. This, don't worry, it's not going to be super uh, deep. Is there anyone you think I should interview on the Iris podcast? Ooh. Um. Let's see here. For sure, I. I mean, you should interview Andy. Definitely done. I've already Andy. texted him. We just got to get it on the calendar. 
Oh my goodness. You know, I'm trying to think like, is there anyone that's like uh, hidden that you're like, will you got to get them on because they're spectacular. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking right now. I'm like, (laughs) Oh, like all my best friends are coming to my mind right now. Like you Smith, Smith, get her, uh, all my like on fire YWAM friends are coming to mind, but, um, well, listen, how about you think about it? Uh, before we end this, if a name comes yeah. to you, you, you fill me in last, but not least. I, and I, and I yeah. really, I really want to hear this from you. What do you feel like, you know, during this, during this season, I've been getting, I've been having prophets on here. We've been had, you know, leaders. I had Bishop Garlington on here a couple of days ago, wow. just so spectacular, but I love the variety in the body of Christ and, and the demographics and the age, like the Lord's speaking to each person different. What do you feel like the word for the, for, for the body that, that he's speaking to you right now? Yes, sir. I'm going to just mute my phone because for Go some for reason it. I'm getting tons of texts right now. You're totally fine. I've, uh, mine's blown up too. Okay, great. Um, so it was, what is the Lord saying in this hour? You just like, yeah, what do you feel like the Lord's speaking right now? Like, is there anything that you feel like as you've processed this, as you've prayed into it, is there anything the Lord's speaking? Yeah, I would say there's, okay. I feel like there's the obvious things, but they need to be kept being said out loud. I mm-hmm. feel like there is a divine reset right now where, you know, the normal Sunday morning, you just can't do anymore. And I feel like there is such a need for connection first with God. That is being reset in our hearts. And then I feel like that overflows into we're having to relearn how to connect with each other. Hmm. Because I feel like because we have to do everything on social media right now, it's helping us realize we're not actually connecting to what we need through social media. Where I feel like before this quarantine, we thought, man, I'm connecting with people through social media and online. And (laughs) I feel like we are seeing the value of in-person fellowship Hmm. more than ever. And so I feel like the Lord is the pressing the reset button on a few things. And I will be bold enough to say this, you know, I had the amazing privilege of leading worship at Free Chapel with Matt Redman for one of their live stream things during quarantine. Such a privilege to be around such a psalmist of our generation, you know, just, oh my goodness, you know, it's like. Maddie's the how, best. How, Shout how out. You here? You're just like, what? Okay. Um, and he asked. Jensen Franklin a question, and I have repeated this multiple times. I hope they're okay with it. But he said, during this time, what do you think people should be writing about? And without skipping a beat, Jensen Franklin said, we've got to be writing about the return of Christ. And Matt said, I've heard multiple pastors say this. And so I feel like there is also an emphasis on it is biblical to live with urgency of the return of Christ without being scared of eschatology. Do you know what I mean? Paul lived with urgency. He said, because the end is near, Paul lived with an urgency of he's coming. And so I feel like it's biblical. I feel like the Lord is restoring the biblical foundation to live with an urgency and truth that he is coming back and those days will come. And are we entering into them? I'll leave that to the prophets. You know what I mean? <laughs> Just go Google that. But um, I, I <laughs> be ready. What what I, you re- when you Google that? Just be ready. It's a it's yeah, a be yeah. Ready. It's, it's a rabbit hole. On, but, you know. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But I do feel like there is a sweetness of the spirit, an invitation almost, where he's like, hey, I kind of need to nudge my church a little bit to remind them I am coming back and I'm coming back for a bride. And so I've been very stirred with like, man, I'm not really bent to to that's not really like maybe the core thing I would be studying or what I would even be writing songs about. But I feel a fresh challenge on my heart to get in the word Mm. of what does the word say about Jesus coming back? And are we singing songs about it to help disciple the church in that as well? Mm. So that's, that's kind of like, I know that that seems very surface level, but I'm like, man, I feel like there's so many conversations we need to start having as a church that maybe we haven't been talking about that. It's time to start talking about because it's in the word. It's in the yeah. Bible. So listen, I, I didn't set this up, but I've been interviewing a lot of people, uh, a lot of my friends. I just had a, a friend on part of this, Julian. I don't know what order they're going to come out in. So whether it's you see this later, it doesn't matter. You'll figure it out. But Julian, yeah. I, I asked him the same question and his response. He's a, he's a prophetic guy. He's like, he said the, 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 the worship music, he said, God is changing worship music in this time away from talking about him 
or about the the things that he's done and 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 switching over to praise and he says and and he said and there's going to be a switch in in theology uh, of worship music he just said this like an hour and a half ago when i was on when i was on with him he's the only one that said that what? and then i get you on so i just i i love that i love hearing that so so lord let it let it be like yeah, i i know I you know, I, I dig you so much, like, because I hear, I hear this just super gifted worship leader that, that, that cruises the planet, giving her gifts, but you have the, you have the heart of a missionary. So it's like, I feel like, I feel like we could just roll. Like, I just, yeah, I just I feel like, that. like everything you're saying, it, it so matches up with my heart. Um, yeah. I love that passion. I love that zeal. And, uh, I love that you're a musicianary and, uh, yeah, I mean, Honestly, well, when I just the whole Iris movement, it is so funny and crazy to me how similar the DNA of like fired fragrance circuit writers and yeah. Iris is. I remember being 20 and they sent me to pick up Heidi from the airport because she came to Kona and I was like, oh, Who's Heidi? Sure. <laughs> um, I had no idea. And it, I just remember thinking, Who is this tribe? So we just will so much honor for you guys and what you've pioneered. And just you personally, I know I was so eager to meet you because I just, the things Heidi had to say about you, they, they were deep, just deep gratitude for you so much, you know, uh, amidst the craziness. Yeah. I just was always like, who is this guy that everyone is so grateful for? So it really is an honor to, to know you and get to know you more, like, Amazing. Uh, thank you so much. If you want a list of people that are not grateful, I can give you that list too. So uh, I, <laughs> I just, I love it. You know, um, I, I love what you're doing. I, I'm, I'm super thankful. You're the first. You're the first one. I just shot a message to on Instagram and said, "Hey, can you do this?" And and you reached I out. It. I love that. Love that heart. Had a great time connecting with you and your husband. Uh, meeting your meeting your kiddos in Brazil. And I really look forward to the next time we get to hang. Um, when this Come thing on. lifts and and people are gathering again, and I know we're gonna our, our paths are gonna cross, and I just can't I can't yes. wait for that. So listen, next time you're up in Reading, you got to come hang out. I can cook a mean steak. I can stick you guys on a boat. Yes. I can uh, I can uh, yeah, we'll figure it out. Whatever you guys want, I'll make it happen. And we Do we got to hang, get our families together. Yes. I love it. Awesome. Well, listen, thank you so much, Lindy. If people want to follow you, f do your things, buy your music, all the all the stuff, how do they yeah. do that? So if you search Lindy Conant or Lindy Conant Kofer, you know, we're kind of in the awkward. We're switching everything to Lindy Kofer soon. But for now, if you just put in Lindy Conant, you'll be able to find in, find everything. I have, a, I have a couple of friends that they got known, you know, in their name, you know, and then they yeah. get married. And, and that's such a hard transition. It's so funny. And it's like, well, all right, here we go. Good luck. We're starting over. Let's do it. I way. love it. I love it. Well, uh, so fun. fantastic. So follow her. Go to Instagram. What's your Insta? Uh, Lindy Conant. Lindy underscore Conant. Okay. So do all that. All of you people. I know some of you guys are super old, like River people. Uh, so get, get some help. Find Instagram. Get her on there. And all of you guys, I'm just insulting our, our, our viewership. No, I love you guys. If you like this, and I know you did, just share it. Pass it around because uh, definitely people need to hear uh, what Lindy was talking about in, in regards, well, everything, but specifically the adoption, taking care of children. Mm. I, really, come on, yeah. guys. Like, let's spread the word. Um, and uh, and if, if they – actually, let me just say this. If people – are hungry to get involved in adoption, start the process. Maybe they saw, oh, what's that movie? What's the movie that just came out? Uh, family. Dude, I cried. Like, I had yeah. as much conviction walking out of that movie uh, yeah. as, as I have some of the greatest messages. But, you know, if, if they do want to start down that road, like, give them step one. Yeah. Step one would be to find foster care agencies in your region, which is really easy to do, especially with the internet now. And then you start calling. You can always foster directly through your county. Wherever you live, you can foster through directly through your county. The reason why we got a foster care agency is because Southern California is so backed up. There's so many kids that now there's agencies that work with yeah. the county that help it go faster. So we are personally with an agency called Olive Crest. But the step one is finding an agency in your region, in your county. And then literally what you do is you do about six months of classes, you're approved. Mm. 
And listen, I don't know about any of the finance, but if, if that finance thing is running through your mind of like, we might not know, we don't have this. Listen, I'm going to tell you, if God can provide you a ticket to go and visit Mozambique, like yeah. just think of how much more, you know, just yeah. that, think of how much more he's going to provide as you go down this road. Uh, provision is, uh, finance is never the issue. So, That's right. And I will say this. This is where I'm like, revival has to turn into reformation. I know we're going so long, but right now, the amount it costs for you to go get an abortion is incomparable to how much it is to adopt. I mean, but if you are like, if you feel called to foster care, it costs you nothing. And, and you, I mean, if you're in it for money, you might as well quit now, Mm. but you do, the government will basically pay you to take care of this kid. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if you're worried about money in the, in terms of foster care, what's crazy is because we're adopting mm-hmm. Bubba out of foster care, we don't have to pay for anything. But I do think it's time for reformation. I think it needs to be cheaper to adopt kids. Because wow. I'm like, I don't understand how we can pay so little to abort a baby, but yet people have to fundraise thousands and thousands of dollars to adopt a baby. I think there's some reformation coming in that area on the value of being able to take a kid in. Because st- statistics will tell you, there's over 400,000 kids right now in the U.S. in foster care. 100,000 of them are ready to be adopted. But it is so hard to find those ones that are ready to be adopted. And I'm telling you this from experience. So wow. it's very interesting. I, I think the Lord is setting the scene for a real reformation in this area of foster care and adoption. So what I heard you say was that the government will pay, at least here in America, uh, yeah. for you to love, disciple, mother yeah. and father a child yeah. into a lifelong relationship with Jesus yes. and a life that 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 will literally be be changed. Um, yeah, I, and I, it's not a lot, but if you're worried about finances, don't be. Yeah, yeah. don't be. Yeah. Um, and then I just want to throw in my, a little bit of my own sister because I I, I want to sing her praises. Single mom yes. on the missions oh. field loves Jesus, waiting waiting for that moment where the Lord will give her you know, that her, her husband, but didn't, yeah. didn't wait either and realize wow. I'm going after this and at great cost, right? A lot of guys that will scare, that scares a lot of people away, but said it's more valuable yeah. to love than just to, to focus on what I want. And so yeah. Emmeline Hart, I love you. You're my hero. And, uh, uh and L- Lindy, you're, you're my hero. I just, yeah, I'm fascinated by you. I'm blown away by your heart. So listen, we're going to definitely do this again sometime. And for all of you guys watching this, uh, g- yeah, just reach out to Lindy. If if that word of adoption really has sh- has sh- shaken your heart, I-, I don't know if you accept DMs in your, in your Instagram, but whatever, you know, like I'm sure that she'll bend over backwards, at least point you in the right direction. And yeah. Uh, and yeah. So come on. Wow. Any last words? In, uh... Nope. That's it, dude. (laughs) Love you, girl. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you guys for watching. If you like this, uh, share it. Do all the things that the younger generation tells you to do on internet videos. We love you. I will see you on the next Iris Global Green Room. See ya.